This lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on number theory, and will be about quadratic reciprocity. So just quickly recall, we have the Legendre symbol, um, AP, which is plus one if A is a, a quadratic residue. In other words, a square modulo P and A not zero, and it's minus one if not and zero if a is congruent to zero. Um, and we found a few basic properties of it. For, for example, we worked out that minus one p is equal to plus one if and only if p is congruent to one mod four. I should have said p is always an odd prime. And we worked out that two was a quadratic residue. So this is plus one if and only if P is congruent to plus or minus one modulo eight. And we also know it's multiplicative, A, B, P equals A, P, B, P. Um, and it's periodic, so um, A plus N, P, P is the same as A, P. And there's one more really vital property of this symbol, which is the law of quadratic reciprocity, which says that if P and Q are distinct and odd and prime, then PQ um, times QP is equal to minus one to the P minus one over two times Q minus one over two. Um, which is kind of really rather astonishing because, um, you know, the question of whether P is a quadratic residue of Q seems to have nothing to do with the question of whether Q is a quadratic residue of P. But this, this formula says they're very closely related. Um, this number here is minus one if P and Q are both three mod four and one if one of them is one mod four. So you can write this as PQ equals QP unless p and q are both congruent to 3 mod 4, in which case um, p, q is minus q, p. Um, and um, these properties of the quadratic um, residue symbol give um, a reasonably efficient way of calculating it. Because if we want to calculate um, something like AP, we can factorize A into a product um, um, a, a plus or minus one times the power of two times um, Q1 times Q2 and so on. And so multiplicativity reduces the problem of calculating this to the problem of finding minus 1p, which we already know, 2p, which we already know, and qip. And we can sort of calculate qip. Um, if qi is bigger than p, we can reduce it mod p and make it smaller. If qi is less than p, we can use the quadratic reciprocity to turn this upside down and, and continue making things smaller. It'll probably be easier if I do an example. So let's calculate um, this Legendre symbol. So this happens to be a prime, and I want to know whether or not 1001 is a quadratic residue. So first of all, we factorize 1001. So this is 7 times 11 times 13 over 99991. So um, um, this becomes 7 over 99991 times 11 over 99991 times 13 over 99991. And now we can figure out each of these using the quadratic reciprocity law. Um, so, so for example, here 7 and 99991 are both 3 um, modulo 4. So this is equal to minus 99991 um, over 7. And now we reduce 99991 modulo 7, and this becomes minus 3, 7. And if we're being really lazy, we can just use quadratic reciprocity again. So 3 and 7 are both 
3 mod 4, so we can invert this and we get a minus sign, um, and then we reduce this, reduce 7 mod 3, so this becomes 1, 3, um, and now 1, 3 we know is equal to 1, and we do 11, 9, 9, 9, 9, 1 in the same way. So um, again, 11 is 3 mod 4, so we get 9, 9, 9, 9, 1, and 11 with a minus sign. Um, and this is minus 1, 11, which is minus 1. And finally, 13, 9, 9, 9, 9, 1, we do in the same way. So this becomes plus 9, 9, 9, 9, 1, 13, because one of these two primes is 1 mod 4, so we get a plus sign here. And then we reduce this modulo um, 13, so this becomes 8, 13. And now this is 2, 13 cubed, and 2, 13 is minus 1, because 2 is congruent to 5 modulo 13, so this is minus 1 cubed, which is equal to minus 1. So finally, um, we finish off by taking these three numbers and multiplying them together, and we get 1 times minus 1 times minus 1, which is equal to plus 1. So um, 1001 is a square, or a quadratic residue, mod 99991. Um, if you want to and actually work out what it's the square of, it turns out to be um, congruent to um, 38521 squared. Just in case you don't believe my calculation with the quadratic residue symbol. Um, so, um, previous lecture, we did a few cases of working out um, what um, AP was for various small values of A. For instance, we did 3P and we did 5p, and it's sort of obvious we could have used the same method to work out 7p and 11p, but the method was getting pretty tiresome. Um, um, so um, what we're going to do is to use the law of quadratic reciprocity to um, find an easier way to work it out. Um, by the way, the previous method does at least show that ap depends only on p modulo 4a. You remember the formula we had for this sort of obviously only dependent on p modulo 4a. Anyway, let's do an example of, um, let's find the prime such that 13p um, is equal to 1. Um, and that's easy because 13p is equal to p13. That's because p is 13 is congruent to 1 mod 4, so we can just invert this using the law of quadratic reciprocity. And p13 is easy to work out because we just have to find the squares mod 13. So if we work out 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, and 6 squared modulo 13, we get 1, 4, 9, 3, um, um, 12, and... Um, Minus 3 is 10. We don't need to do 7 squared because that's the same as 6 squared, and 8 squared is the same as 5 squared, and so on. So um, um, 13 is square mod p um, is equivalent to asking for p, um, I should say p, let's take p not equal to 2 or 13 because these are special cases. So otherwise it, it's equivalent to p being congruent to 1 or 9, um, 3, 12, or 10, mod 13. Um, and then you can check that 2, um, th th 13 is actually a square modulo 2, and um, it's also a square modulo 13, because it's just 0. Um, so let's do a slightly different case. Let's try and find the prime such that um, 7 p is equal to 1. This is a little bit different because this is equal to um, um, uh, minus uh, p um, 7. Um, and um, 
Uh, so, so it's equal to minus p7 if p is congruent to 3 mod 4, and plus p7 if p is congruent to 1 modulo 4. So um, for p congruent to 1 modulo 4, um, the, the, the condition that p is a quadratic residue of 7 says that p is congruent to 1, 2, or 4 mod 7. If p is congruent to 3 mod 4, then p must be a non-residue mod 7, so we get p is congruent to um, 3, 5, or 6 mod 7. So, so we've got two um, slightly different cases. Either p is 3 mod 4 and 3, 5, 6 mod 7, or p is 1 mod 4 and 1, 2, or 4 mod 7. And this is obviously by the Chinese remainder theorem, we can give this as a condition mod 28. So this is the same as saying P is congruent to 1, 9, 25, 3, 19, or 27, mod 28, because these are the numbers that satisfy these two conditions. And as before, we see that now P depends on, so the quadratic residue symbol depends only on P modulo 4 times the numerator, whereas in this case it only depended on P modulo the numerator. So now I'm going to give um, a proof of the um, quadratic reciprocity theorem, and there's a lot of choice in this. That, that There are well over 300 published proofs of this, um, and every single one of them involves some slightly tricky, non-obvious idea. There doesn't seem to be any really easy, straightforward proof of the quadratic reciprocity law. Um, Gauss himself started off this mania for finding proofs by finding eight different proofs of the quadratic reciprocity law. Um, of course, strictly speaking, there aren't really 300 completely different proofs because quite a few of these proofs are minor variations of each other. You know, um, um, so um, what I'm going to do is to give um, one of the what I think is one of the easiest proofs, at least it's, it's, it's one of the ones that's is easy to remember the, the, the main idea. Um, so with many mathematical proofs, there's a sort of key idea um, powering it. And the key idea is usually fairly short, but a bit tricky to think of. And then in order to make this key idea work, you've got to do a lot of routine calculation, but the routine calculation doesn't require any, any thought. You just sort of plough ahead with it. Um, so, so what we're going to do is to give the key idea of this proof and then work out the routine calculation. So, so here's the main idea. And we work modulo P times Q where P and Q are distinct odd primes. And we're going to try and prove the quadratic reciprocity rule for these primes. And what we're going to do is to take um, um, all numbers in Z modulo PZ, PQZ star. So we're taking numbers mod PQ um, that are co-prime to P and Q. And we're going to arrange them into P minus 1 times Q minus 1 over two pairs, where each pair consists of a number A and minus A. And we're going to take a product of one element of each pair. And um, this product will be well-defined up to sine. Um, because we, we get a sort of sign ambiguity because we don't know which element of this pair we're taking. Um, and there are three ways, natural ways, we can do this product. The first is we can take the product over all A, that means the product over all A co prime to PQ, with zero less than A is less than PQ over two. Or a second product we can do is we can take the product over all A such that naught is less than a is less than q over 2, where, 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 where this time we've reduced a modulo q. So we reduce it modulo q and um, check that it's between naught and p over 
q over 2. And thirdly, we can do the same thing. We take the product over all elements a such that 0 is, 0 is less than a is less than p over 2. And here we're taking a mod p and saying a mod p must be between 0 and p, p over 2. Um, and um, in order to work these out, let, let's first just quickly recall um, a couple of results we're going to be using. So first of all, we first of all recall the Chinese remainder theorem, which says that Z modulo PQ can be identified with Z modulo PZ times Z modulo QZ. In other words, an integer modulo PQ is uniquely determined by something modulo P and something modulo Q. And we're going to use this for the um, integers co-prime to P for the unit. So um, we also get um, the, 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 the things mod PQ that are co-prime to PQ can also be written as pairs like this. The second result we're going to use is the quadratic um, residue symbol is congruent to p to the q minus 1 over 2 mo modulo q. So this is just Euler's result. Okay, ha having recalled those two results, um, now we're going to um, work out the product in several different ways. And I think that this will be easiest to understand if we, if we just do a specific case. So we might take p equals 5, q equals 7. So we're going to write out all the numbers from 0, 1, up to 34, that are modulo p, q, and we're going to write them in a sort of Chinese remainder theorem form. So here they're going to be um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 modulo q, and 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 modulo p. So we just write out all these numbers and we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 5, 6, uh, 7, 8, 9, um, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, and then here we get 14, and when we jump down here we get 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, then we get 20, um, 21, jumps in here, 22, 23, 24 up there, and then we jump down here, 25, 26, 27, um, here we jump up to 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. This has actually worked. So here we've got 35, 35 numbers identified modulo P and modulo Q, except we want to throw away the ones that are divisible by 5 and the ones that are divisible by 7. Well, the ones divisible by 5 are here and the ones divisible by 7 are up here. And now there are three ways we can choose half of these numbers. First of all, we can choose the, 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 the red ones, which are these ones here. So these are the numbers that are less than q over 2 modulo q. So that, that, that they're common to 1, 2, or 3 modulo 7. Um, next, we have the blue numbers. These are the ones that are less than p over 2 modulo p. And finally, we have the numbers that are less than um, p, um, p q over 2. So that's less than 17. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, should be 12. I've missed one. Right there. Oh, here they are. So, so these gold numbers are um, less than p q over 2, which is uh, 17.5. So um, in each case, there are 12 numbers, and the, the product of the red numbers and the product of the blue numbers and the product of the gold numbers are all the same modulo PQ up to a factor of plus or minus 1. And now we can work out some of these products. So um, 
we can work out this product of all the red numbers modulo q so modulo p I'm getting my p's and q's modeled up and that's quite easy because we first of all multiply all these numbers together and these are one two three and four modulo five so we get um p minus one factorial and then these ones are one two three four mod five so we get p minus one factorial and then we get another factor of p minus one factorial so we get p minus sorry uh, p minus one factorial to the q minus one over two which in this case is five minus one factorial to the seven minus one over two and we do much the same with the blue numbers here so here um, the product of all these numbers is going to be um, q minus 1 factorial where q is 7 and the product of all these is going to be q minus 1 factorial so we get a factor of q minus 1 factorial to the p minus 1 over 2 modulo q so we can work out the product of the blue numbers mod q and the product of the red numbers modulo p by the way if you remember wilson's theorem you can actually you actually know that p minus one factorial happens to be, happens to be minus one but we're not actually going to use that um, and now what is the difference between the product of the red numbers and the product of the blue numbers well um the red product is in fact equal to the blue product times 5 minus 1 over 2 times 7 minus sorry minus 1 to the 5 minus 1 over 2 times 7 minus 1 over 2 and that's easy to see because let's compare the difference between the red numbers and the blue numbers is we're, we're changing the product of these numbers here the product of these numbers here where I've used orange to mark them although unfortunately orange looks rather like red um, and um, so for each of these we've had to change the sign so 32 changes sign to 3 and 6 changes sign to 29 and so on so we've got a sign change for every number in in this rectangle this rectangle has size p minus 1 over 2 times q minus 1 over 2 so we get this this factor here between the, the red and blue factors um, next we want to calculate um, the um, red and blue factors uh, so, sorry we want to calculate the the um, the, um, the product of all the gold numbers um, modulo p and modulo q so um, this means we take all the numbers one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So this is this is up to PQ minus one over two. And now we're taking P equals five, and we throw away all the numbers that are divisible by five, because we want numbers that are co-prime to five. And then we then we multiply them all together. Let's see what we get. Well, we get here we get. 5 minus 1 factorial modulo p and here we get 5 minus 1 factorial and here we get 5 minus 1 factorial and here we get well 5 minus 1 over 2 factorial because um, we, we, we only we only get halfway through before we run into um, pq minus 1 over 2. So at first sight we seem to get this number 5 minus 1 factorial cubed divided by 5 minus 1 over 2 factorial but we made a mistake because we accidentally included the multiples of 7 so we've got a multiple of 7 there and a multiple of 7 there so we'd better divide out by these multiples of 7 so we have to divide out by 7 times 2 times 7 and this is equal to 7 to the 5 minus 1 over 2 times 5 minus 1 over 2 factorial so if we put this all together we find that this um, the gold product is congruent to 5 minus 1 factorial to the 7 minus 1 over 2 times 5 minus 1 over 2 factorial divided by 7 to the 5 minus 1 over 2 times 5 minus 1 over 2 factorial 
And incidentally, the, the, these two factorials cancel out, so this expression isn't, isn't as bad as it looks at first sight. Now let's do the other case where, where, where we do it for... Um, where we do it for 7 instead. So this time we take the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And this time we cross off all the multiples of 7. So we cross off 7 and 14. And what we're left with is 7 minus 1 factorial here. Here we're working mod 7. And here we also get 7 minus 1 factorial, because these are numbers from 1 to 6, modulo 7 again. And here we get 7 minus 1 over 2 factorial. And again, we forgot to throw out the multiples of 5. So there are some multiples of 5 we should not have included in this product. So we should divide this by um, 5 times 2 times 5 times 3 times 5, which is equal to 5 to the 7 minus 1 over 2 times 7 minus 1 over 2 factorial, because you can see this goes up to 7 minus 1 over 2 times 5. Um, so, um, as um, just as before, um, this sum becomes 7 minus 1 factorial times 7 minus 1 factorial over 2 divided by this expression here. Um, and now we can do the same thing for any p and q. And you see that what we get is if we take the numbers 1, 2, 3, up to p, q minus 1 over 2. And we want to work out what the product is mod p after crossing off all the multiples of p and all the multiples of q. What we're getting is p minus 1 factorial times p minus 1 factorial all the way up to times p minus 1 over 2 factorial which is like this product here or this product here. And then we have to divide it by um, q times 2q all the way up to times p minus 1 over 2q. And if we work this out, it's just equal to p minus 1 factorial to the q minus 1 um, over 2 times p minus 1 over 2 factorial all divided by q to the um, p minus 1 over 2 times p minus 1 over 2 factorial. And just as before, these p minus 1 over 2 factorials cancel out. So we've worked out the product over all numbers um, modulo p, q. And now we're going to put everything together in one big page. Um, and... To do this, let's write down the three products. So we've got the first product, which was the product over all n co prime to pq with naught zero less than n is less than pq over two. And then we had the red product, which was the product over all n such that zero is less than n is, um, is less than q over 2, except here we take n to be modulo q. And then we have the blue product, which was kind of similar. We had the product over all n co prime to pq, except we take 0 is less than n is less than um, p over 2 modulo, where n is now taken modulo p. And now we're going to work out what the ratios between these products are. Well, we worked out what the ratio between these two was. It was just minus 1, p minus 1 over 2 times q minus 1 over 2, because we just had to change all the signs in some rectangle. Now let's work out what the difference between these two is. Well, these two differ by sign, so let's recall what they were. Well, this is congruent to p minus 1 factorial to the q minus 1 over 2, mod p. And we worked out what this one, one was mod p. Um, it was congruent to p minus 1 factorial to the q minus 1 over 2 divided by q to the p minus 1 over 2 modulo p. So you remember that was on the previous sheet where we had this expression here and these p minus 1 over 2s cancelled out, so I'm not bothering to write them in here. 
And now, if we compare this expression with this expression, we see they're almost the same. We've got this p minus 1 factorial to the something or other, and the p minus 1 factorial to the same thing. So the only difference is this. And we know these differ by, these two products differ by a sign. So the sign must be um, q to the p minus 1 over 2 modulo p. But by Euler's theorem, this is just equal to q, the, the Legendre symbol qp. So these two differ by qp. And comparing these two is almost exactly the same, except we change p and q. So this one is congruent to q minus 1 factorial to the p minus 1 over 2 modulo q. And um, if we want to work out this modulo q, we get q minus 1 factorial to the p minus 1 over 2 divided by q, getting my p's and q's muddled up, p to the q minus 1 over 2 mod q. And now if we compare this expression with this expression, we see the difference as a factor of p to the q minus 1 over 2 mod q, which by Euler's theorem is just p the Legendre symbol PQ. So to summarise, we've got three numbers here which are differing by signs, and the difference between these two is that is a sign of QP, the difference between these two is a sign of PQ, and the difference between these two is the sign of minus 1 to the P minus 1 over 2 times Q minus 1 over 2. And that obviously means that the product of any two of these signs must be the same as the, as the third one, so we get PQ times QP equals minus 1 b minus 1 over 2 times q minus 1 over 2, which is the law of quadratic reciprocity. Um, so um, um, this, the, 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 so, so as you see, the calculations for this proof is a bit messy, but the fundamental idea is very simple. All you do is remember um, this triangle which has three products in, so there are the three obvious ways of choosing half the elements modulo PQ, and um, these three products all differ by signs, and the signs are the three terms in the quadratic reciprocity law, and so the, the, the three terms in the quadratic reciprocity law must have product equal to one. Okay, so um, next lecture I'll be giving another proof of the um, quadratic reciprocity law using Gaussian sums, which tends to be um, most mathematicians' favourite proof.